what's going on guys? David and I are back with another video and the last time we talked about a phone from HTC it was the U Ultra and that phone was wow that phone was a huge flop um, but this time around we're talking about the new U11 now I've been using it for about a week and a half and I have to say it's probably one of my favorite Android releases of 2017 and here's why so we all know that there's a couple things that grab your attention whenever you first pick up a phone, but on the HTC U11, it's most definitely the design. Have you seen the back of this thing? It looks like a mirror. Now, our particular unit is in the brilliant black color, so you're really not going to get that kind of iridescent effect that you would get on other U11 models. Nonetheless, a lot of times when I pick up this phone and I look at just the back, I can see myself in it, which is not something I can say for a lot of flagship phones these days. Besides that, you have metal all around the edges of the phone, and on the front you have Gorilla Glass 5 for scratch protection. With that being said, I do absolutely love the design of the U11. The only thing that drives me off the wall is the fact that because the back is so reflective and shiny, it is a huge, huge fingerprint magnet. So if you're like me and you just cannot stand fingerprints on your phone, you better do yourself a favor and keep a microfiber cloth in your pocket. So you can wipe it down, I don't know, I'm wiping mine down once every day, uh, once every seven or eight hours, um, just to help with my own sanity. Other cool parts about the U11's build. On the top of the phone, you have your SIM tray, which also comes with a dedicated micro SD card slot, expandable up to 256 gigs on top of the 64 gigs of internal storage. On the right side of the phone, you have your volume rocker and a textured power button, which I love. And on the bottom, you have a USB Type-C port. Now there is no headphone jack, but fortunately on the U11 you do still have the boom, no they're not boom sound, what are they? Uh, boom. Wait. What kind of headphones are they? And they boom sound? We're gonna figure this out guys. Usonic, yes, they're Usonic headphones and they are awesome. They also came on the U Ultra. Um, they have an ability to, I'm not sure how it works exactly, but they're able to scan the inside of your ear in order to adjust volume levels of music or whatever you're listening to um, to create some sort of active noise cancellation effect and it works really well so yeah usonic headphones inside the box um, if you're not happy with that and let's say you have other headphones you want to use HTC finally did what apple did and included an adapter um, for your old headphones so yeah it'll go into the usb-c port and on the other end you'll have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack um, HTC has you covered as far as audio goes if you're not one for headphones Boom sound is back on the HTC U11, and it's even better than what it was on the 10. So you still have the same dual speaker combo, one on the bottom and one in the earpiece, and it gets incredibly loud. And what I really like about it is, it doesn't get distorted at max volume like you find on some other flagship phones. So yeah, boom sound is back, it sounds amazing. And to top everything off as far as the hardware goes, you also have IP67 water and dust resistance. Welcome to the future, HTC. So let's talk about a feature of the U11 that HTC arguably spent the most amount of money marketing towards consumers, and that's what they call EdgeSense. Phone manufacturers these days are trying to find ways to make us use our phone easier without incorporating some sort of gimmicky feature into the phone. Now EdgeSense is the ability to squeeze the edges of the phone in order to perform different functions. Now the squeezes are broken up into two different types, a short squeeze and a long squeeze, and depending on what you do, you can either open an application, um, launch to Google Assistant, open up your camera, um, and even if you're inside your camera, you can squeeze the edges of the phone to take a photo or to take a video. Um, does this actually improve your day-to-day -day usage? Not necessarily. I think it comes down to how much you really do care about using features like this. I didn't find myself using EdgeSense too much um, day to day, but I do have a short squeeze uh, to open the camera and I do have a long squeeze to open the Google Assistant. So when I actually remember to use those features, um, it is pretty convenient. I will say this though, the one part of EdgeSense I did use a lot was taking a picture with the camera. Um, because I do find that sometimes my hands are a little shaky whenever I'm trying to hold it one-handed and take a photo. So the ability to just kind of hold it, squeeze the sides, and then it focuses and takes the shot, that's pretty cool. So useful, maybe. Gimmicky, maybe. Um, but if you make the most out of it, it is still a pretty neat feature, I think. 
So the screen on the HTC U11 is really nice. It uses a similar screen that you found on the U Ultra. So you're talking about 5.5 inches, which is different from the U Ultra screen size, but it's still the same LCD, Super LCD 5 panel, and it looks absolutely phenomenal. It's got a resolution of 1440 by 2560, so yeah, Quad HD, and like I said, it looks amazing. Now, it's not gonna look like the Galaxy S8 with a near bezel-less design. It's still the standard 16 by nine aspect ratio, but nonetheless, I switched shortly from the Galaxy S8 to the U11 just because we have to review quite a few phones and I really didn't miss the display of my Galaxy S8 all too much um, and that's actually saying something because the display on the S8 is phenomenal. But yeah, back to the original point, U11's display, freaking awesome. And of course, under the display in typical HTC fashion, you do have your back button shaped like a triangle and you do have your recent apps button shaped like a square and you have your fingerprint sensor embedded into the capacitive home button in a very comfortable spot. Thank you, HTC. So the performance and the software on the U11 kind of go hand in hand with each other, mainly because HTC Sense is one of the most toned down skins I've ever seen on Android. Seriously, it's incredibly close to a stock Android experience, and if you guys have watched any of our videos in the past, you know that if I cannot get a Pixel or a Nexus, my next favorite phone to go to is something by HTC because their software is so close to stock Android. Um, couple that with the fact that the phone comes with a Snapdragon 835, 4 gigs of RAM, and an Adreno 540 GPU, performance on the U11 is absolutely stellar. I mean, the phone just screams whenever you use it. It's got the same internals as the Galaxy S8, but I found that in everyday, kind of day-to-day -day tasks, the phone has hiccups and stutters much less often, if none at all, when compared to a phone like the Galaxy S8, and I think that really comes down to HTC's awesome software. Now, I will say this, I do absolutely love HTC Sense. I do think that maybe it is time for a small refresh, and it doesn't have to be anything major. I'm not saying you have to completely overhaul the way the software looks, because I do like it. I don't know, maybe change the accent color in the settings to match you know, what the Pixel has. Um, the settings are still this kind of minty green that you found back in Android 6.0, 7.0, um, whereas even phones like OnePlus these days have tweaked their settings to match the kind of Pixel's new blue settings color. I think HTC could easily do something like that just to kind of make the phone feel even more closer to stock Android. Um, it's something really small and it's not a deal breaker by any means, it's just my own personal opinion and thoughts. Okay, so let's talk about cameras because no smartphone is complete without a good camera experience. So on the front of the HTC U11, you have a 16 megapixel camera with f2.0 aperture and it has the ability to shoot video up to 1080p. Now this is really impressive for a front camera. Is it the best sensor? No. But as far as selfie cameras go, your selfie game will most definitely be upped with the HTC U11. David and I took a couple selfies. You guys can take a look at them here. Enjoy. So the back camera on the U11 is where things start to get a little interesting. Now before the U11 was released, HTC claimed that it scored a 90 on the DxO mark as far as mobile cameras go. Now, if you guys are well aware of other phones that score on the DxO mark, you know that 90 is the highest rated smartphone camera um, on the market. Now, does that necessarily equate to the type of photos you're gonna get? Absolutely not, but I will say this. The back camera on the HTC U11 is incredibly impressive. It is a 12 megapixel shooter with f1.7 aperture, phase detection, autofocus, and optical image stabilization. And in proper lighting and even in low light, you are capable of getting some amazing shots. Go ahead and take a look at these samples. Now another cool thing about the U11 is it can shoot 4K video in 30 frames per second. And it also comes with something that HTC calls 3D audio. Now there's a microphone on the back of the phone, the front, the top, and the bottom. So regardless of how or where you're shooting video, you get the best audio quality because you'll get audio waves from all around the phone. It looks pretty cool. This current sample that you're watching the video on is actually shot on the HTC U11. Let us know what you guys think in the comment section down below. So we're down to the last, but probably one of the most important qualities um, 
for what you should be looking for in a flagship caliber smartphone, and that is the battery life. And I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys, the battery life on the U11 is absolutely fantastic. It is one of the best battery lives I have experienced on an Android flagship, period. Um, like I said, I've been using this phone for a little over a week and a half, almost two weeks now, and I have consistently gotten over five hours, and in some instances, close to seven hours of screen on time while using my U11. And I'll just give you guys a little story to show you how good the battery life is. One night I was just laying down in bed watching YouTube videos, and um, I fell asleep around midnight, I wanna say, and I have YouTube Red because I do have a Google Play Music subscription and they'll give you YouTube Red for free if you have one. So my videos consistently play, plus I have autoplay turned on, so YouTube will automatically play a video that's relevant to the last one I watched. Um, long story short, I woke up at 5.30 in the morning and my HTC was still playing YouTube videos and it had went from about, 70% down to about 30% and when I checked the battery stats I was at over six hours of screen on time consistently streaming YouTube videos and I still had about 30% battery life so yeah um, really impressive for a phone that packs a 3000 milliamp hour battery really impressive so as you guys can tell by watching this review the HTC U11 is actually a fantastic smartphone um, most definitely deserving of its flagship quality name the only thing, and this isn't really a downside in my opinion, it, it'll come down to your own personal preference. The only thing I wish the HTC U11 had was a design language similar to the S8 Plus or the LG G6. Um, because let's be honest, those two phones, as soon as they came out, they arguably pushed design language forward for smartphones. And a lot of times when you look at the traditional 16 by nine aspect ratio now, you start to think to yourself, wow, this design is kind of getting a little dated. Nonetheless, the HTC U11 is a fantastic phone, and like I said, if you do prefer design language over everything else the U11 has to offer, then maybe the U11 is not right for you. Um, but for everyone else out there that just wants an amazing phone that is capable of going through day-to-day -day use with absolutely no problem, I have no problems recommending the HTC U11 for you. And at 649, still about 150 bucks cheaper than a Galaxy S8 Plus. Um, and about a hundred bucks cheaper than the Galaxy S8. So pretty well priced, I'd say. You're getting the complete smartphone flagship experience, um, and it's just a great phone all around. So yeah, if you've been holding out for the U11 or you're still kind of on the fence, absolutely go for it. I would wholeheartedly recommend this phone. If you guys enjoyed this review, please be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. And the last time we talked about a phone from HTC, it was over the U11. And that phone, gosh, that phone was something else. Uh, not worth the price tag. What's in it, the Ultra? Yeah, what did I say? U11. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Looper. <laughs>